What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video where I will be counting down the top 10 battles based on my opinions in the Dynasty Warriors series. So if you've been following along the channel for a little bit now, you know I've been doing a lot of Dynasty Warriors content. We've, we've counted down my top 10 characters, we've done the rankings, and we've done analysis videos for each character in the game. Now I want to rank the top 10 battles within the Dynasty Warriors series based on their impact within history and of course within the game. I came up with the list of the top 10 most like significant or impactful battles within the game and within history. So hope you guys enjoy this video as we jump into the top 10 battles within the Dynasty Warriors series. Lord, please wait! Now is not the time to attack Wu! We must join with them to attack Cao Cao! All right, starting off at number 10, we have the Battle of Yi Ling. So the Battle of Yi Ling was a very interesting battle that took place between Shu and Wu after the death of Guan Yu. And most of the games, Liu Bei is enraged and wanting to, of course, get revenge on the death of his fallen brother. And then in most of the games, you have Zhao Yun or Zhuge Liang trying to convince him otherwise or persuade him not to take this route. It's a very significant battle within the game and within history because after this battle, after the Shu forces lose, the death of Liu Bei follows. And then within the battle itself, I think players within most of the games will recognize and definitely remember this battle, especially with Lu Xun making his like big appearance and then the Stone Sentinel Maze coming into play. We have Zhuge Liang starting to really take reins within the Shu forces. And this battle definitely has a significant moment within the games and within history. In the earlier games, it was definitely more significant as, at least for me personally, it was a pretty difficult battle to get through some of the challenges you had to get through the Stone Sentinel Maze, some of the harder officers, especially if you're on the Shu side, you had a tough time getting through that stage. This is also Zhu Ran shining moment when he sets fire to the camp of the Shu forces, and this is also where Huang Shang actually perishes. And then in some of the games, Gan Ning actually dies in this battle as well. But number 10, we have the Battle of Yi Ling. Lu Bu, do you think that we could really defeat them? Doesn't matter. All right, coming in at number nine, we had the Battle of Xia Pi. So I didn't know if I really wanted the Battle of Xia Pi at number nine or number 10, but just because of the significance of the Battle of Xia Pi and the death of Lu Bu, one of the you know, the greatest warriors within the game and the greatest warriors during this time. I'm going to put the battle of Xia Pi at number 9. Now, within all the games that Xia Pi is a playable stage, I would say that this is probably the easiest times to go against Lu Bu. But I would say it's a very iconic stage and most players definitely, at least when it was first introduced back in like Dynasty Warriors 4, it was very interesting to see because again, Lu Bu was heralded as this demon, this unbeatable character, and then well, historically, and of course within the games, this is where he ends up falling. Of course, Zhang Liao ends up joining Cao Cao after that, and then all the events leading to a successful win over Lu Bu's forces. It's just a very, I think, a very impactful stage within history and within the Dynasty Warriors series. And the only reason, again, that I would say it's a little bit above the Battle of Yi Ling is because it signifies the death of Lu Bu and the fall of one of China's greatest warriors. So coming in at number nine, the Battle of Xia Pi. Tato, just because you have control of the emperor, don't start getting above yourself. It doesn't matter what you think. I will absolutely do what I need to do. All right, coming at number eight, we have the Battle of Guan Du, one of the biggest battles of the early period, the early times of this period. And uh, it's a huge battle between the two largest, you know, northern forces, Yuan Shao versus Cao Cao, two friends battling it out. You know, Cao Cao is at a clear disadvantage in terms of numbers, and he ends up overcoming Yuan Shao's superior numbers and ends up securing pretty much that entire northern region of China, leading Cao Cao to become one of the biggest and closest people to securing China at that time. It's a very big battle. It's a huge moment within most of the games, and it's included in within most of the games that you have to take Bai Ma and Yan Jin, and then you you know you can't, so you gotta retreat. And then Guan Yu, he has his shining moment while he's under Cao Cao. Usually ends up killing both of those characters, who tend to be lauded as Yuan Shao's best general. So because of the cunning and the strategy deployed by Cao Cao, and of course the strategic 
suggestions that he got from Google Jia. Sasa was able to take advantage, find the Wu Chao supply depot like you do in most of the games, take it down. Zhang He ends up defecting. And I would say a monumentous point within the series and within history because at this point, at least in some of the games, you know, Sasa will mention that this is the end of the old guard, right? Dong Zhuo, the Yellow Turbans, Wan Shao, Lu Bu, and some of the other smaller factions were starting to really die off. And the period of the Three Kingdoms was really starting to come to fruition. But coming at number eight, one of the biggest battles of the time, Guan Du, very significant battle and it has a very significant impact within most of the games. I would feel like most players would definitely remember going through this battle. Is that it? The line of people who are following Lu Bei? Wow! It's like a river! Next up, coming in at number 7, we have the Battle of Changban. This is one that I originally had down at number 10 because in terms of like, I guess, size or impact, I was thinking it over and I was like, Changban's not really that big of a battle. It's just Liu Bei kind of escaping and, of course, joining Sun Quan down south and getting away from South South. But a lot of big events happen in this battle. You have the Shangfei Changban Bridge event. You have Zhao Yun saving A Do. It's also the first battle for Zhuge Liang to really prove himself as a strategist. I believe in some of the games, it's really his strategy that allows him to escape. And then again, the significance behind the battle. If it ended up going South South's way and he ended up catching Liu Bei and Liu Bei never made it down South, you could argue that the period of Three Kingdoms would never have come to fruition. It would have never happened because Liu Bei would have been killed. You know, it's a pretty significant battle. It's very pivotal that Liu Bei escapes. It's a very instrumental battle within most of the games, and I would say most players definitely understand the significance and the importance, and can definitely pick out, again, those very pivotal moments within the battle. And that's why I say it's a little higher than some of the other battles, because it has more of those significant moments. More of those characters are starting to shine. They're starting to build more accolades within themselves, and Liu Bei is able to escape and really build up his forces in order to oppose Sao Sao. But coming in at number seven, I think it's a good solid pick for Changban. Let's go ahead and move on to the next battle. <laughs> the Han Empire is crumbling! Bring in the age of the way of peace! All right, coming in at number six. I couldn't make a top 10 battles list without including this one. It's the first, usually the first stage within most of the games. You have the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Probably one of the most famous battles in the game because even if you just pick up the game just for a little bit, you'll remember this battle. This is the first one you go against all the Yellow Turbans, all the crazy fanatics. You got Zhang Jiao at the head, and then you've got all the you know famous warlords at the time coming together, all the playable characters coming together and fighting and beating the Yellow Turbans. I think it's a very significant battle within the series. And again, if the Yellow Turbans would have succeeded, there would have been no Three Kingdoms period. It would just been, I don't know, I guess the Yellow Turban era or whatever it is. Very significant battle. It's pretty much the mark of the beginning of the Three Kingdoms period. And I would say it's a pretty significant battle. It's a pretty well-known battle. It's pretty big in most of the games as well. It's a pretty like big battle. You gotta go against Zhang Liang and Zhang Bao with their sorcery and their crazy tricks and everything like that. Sometimes Zhang Jiao is jumping around the map and he's got his crazy powers. It's 100% a instrumental and pivotal battle for the Dynasty Warriors series because it sets up the whole story. It's got to be included in the top 10. So solid pick for me at number six, we have the Yellow Turban Rebellion. He said to bloody their nose, then pull back and wait for reinforcements. The time for talk is over. Now we can move on to the planning. All right, now we're going into the top five. It's pretty hard to decide like which battles I think is the most significant and the most impactful. You guys let me know down below if my list is in the correct order. Starting off at number five, we have the Battle of Hefei. So Battle of Hefei, I believe, is a very significant and pretty big battle within the series and in history as well. Zhang Liao, Yu Jin, Li Dian holding up against the outnumbering forces of the Wu forces, and they end up victorious. It's a pretty big battle within most of the games. I think in like the earlier games, it was more like the ending battle between Wei and Wu. Taishi Shi ends up dying in this battle. Zhang Liao and Gan Ning go head to head. Zhang Liao puts a lot of pressure on Sun Quan or or, you know, Sun Jian in some of the other cases, forces them to retreat, breaks a bridge down. Sun Quan ends up jumping over the bridge, escaping. Zhang Liao is able to hold off a significant amount. For every one person that was on the wayside, they had 10 people on the Wu side. 
It's just a crazy, crazy battle. And I believe it is definitely one of the bigger battles of this game. And I'm, I mean, in terms of like physically big, like the maps usually for Hafe is kind of big. You have to usually travel around a bunch of different places, you know, securing a bunch of different locations, whether you're on the Wei or the Wu side. It's a pretty good fit for number five. And yeah, I can't say much else about it. Number five, I believe, is the battle of Hafe. This is it. Here at Wu Zhang, our long-standing battle with Wei shall come to an end. All right, coming at number four, we have the Battle of Wu Zhang Plains. I think this battle is probably the second largest in terms of physicality within the game. Like, there's only one battle that's above in terms of like physical, like map size. Uh, Wu Zhang Plains is usually a really big battle in terms of physicality, and of course, Zhuge Liang versus Sima Yi. The showdown between the two greatest strategists at the time, and you get to see all their tricks come out and see who comes out on top. It's a very significant battle for the series. It used to be the ending stage of some of the earlier games. As they expanded with the Jin Dynasty and bringing in more characters, it started to become like the first end of the series, I guess. Uh, it's really the end of like the main, main people within the game. You know, after the Wuzhong Plains battle, the era definitely shifts. You know, it's the end of Zhuge Liang. It's the beginning of, you know, Zheng Wei and Liu Shan and the the future generation of Shu. And within the games, it's it's a very, very significant battle. I think I think it's a solid choice for Wu Zhang at number four. One of the biggest battles. A lot of things happen. A lot of events are going on. You know, you've got Yue Ying with all her inventions coming out. You've got the Shu forces with their ambushes and their traps. And then Sima Yi waiting for the right moment, waiting for the right opportunities. You know, Zhuge Liang passes away. They press the attack. And it is quite the intense battle, especially on the harder difficulties. It's a fun battle. I've always had fun playing this battle. And I think it easily fits as number four here. Battle of Wu Zhang, number four. <laughs> Look at that! It's Lu Bu! Alright, now the top three. So these are the top three biggest battles, in my opinion, in terms of impact and what they represent within the games and within history. Alright, so starting off at number three, we have the Battle of Hu Lao Gate. I included the Yellow Turbans, I have to include the Battle of Hu Lao Gate. It's similar to the Yellow Turbans in terms of like, it's the early part of this series. It's the early part of the history, really cementing the different kingdoms and the different leaders and stuff like that. And uh, all the warlords to come together to fight and take down Dong Zhuo. In terms of map size i believe it's similar in terms of wuzhang i think it's not as big as the biggest battle within the game i think it's a little bit smaller but it's still one of the most impactful stages within the game i'm always nervous even when i was going through the analysis series and going through each character especially if they had a hulao gate stage i was always nervous getting to the hulao gate because we all know who comes out of the hulao gate and that is the big boy demon himself lu bu and within this stage this guy is on another level. Dynasty Wars 9 makes an exception for him because of the fighting battle system. It's very easy to take him down, but every other game, if you are playing on a difficulty higher than easy, even on easy sometimes, you have to be very careful going against Lu Bu because he don't flinch. He knows how to fight. He just goes through you pretty easily. And I would say definitely because of him alone, it makes this battle that much more iconic. There's always a cutscene. There's always something around him appearing at the Battle of Hulao Gate. And he puts that sense of fear into a user. You're going to remember this character. You're like, damn, this dude is like ridiculously strong. Especially if you like don't know anything about the game. Like if you pick up the game and you're having a great time at Hulao, you get to the gate and Lubu shows up. You see the cutscene and you're like, okay, what's this guy about? Let me go ahead and approach him. You end up getting killed in three shots. You're like, whoa. You will remember that. And that's why I think Hulao deserves to be in the top three. It has that impact within the player, it has that impact within the series, and it really, I would say, initiated the whole Three Kingdoms period as each warlord after the battle started to build their own kingdom and started to really cement themselves within the land of China. But easy pick for me, top three, Hu Lao Gate, can't really argue with it. I think it's one of the most impactful and biggest battles in the game and within history. <laughs> So now, Wu is begging for our help. So they fear Guan Yu that much. 
Now, coming in at number two, we have the Battle of Fawn Castle. Now, this could be a controversial pick. Let me know what you guys think down below. But I think Fawn Castle is one of the biggest battles of its time because after this battle commences, after it concludes and everything is done and Guan Yu is dead and everything like that, I genuinely think the Three Kingdoms period takes a shift. Like a very dramatic shift because after the death of Guan Yu, Cao Cao passes away, the Battle of Yiling happens like I already talked about, and Liu Bei passes away. The new generation of series and history starts to take over. It shifts dramatically. I think it almost, in a sense, and this is just my opinion, in a sense, I think it almost kind of goes downhill. I think Fawn Castle is the climax of the Dynasty Warriors series because up until this point, you know, you had the Three Kingdoms, everybody had their, you know, their generals, everybody was kind of well known and nobody was really making any moves anywhere, especially with Guan Yu being in the middle. You know, Wu wasn't really making any moves, Wei couldn't make any moves, and Shu was just biding their time looking for opportunities to advance or whatever it is and i think after the fall of guan yu is when it really starts to go downhill so i think it's an easy choice for me in terms of fawn castle being number two because of the impact it has within the series and within history in terms of physical map size it's not a very big battle it's a very small battle super significant battle uh, let me know what you guys think about that down below but i think fawn castle easily number two because again i just think it's the climax of the series once guan yu goes down man everything changes and i think it's an easy choice for fawn castle being at number two. And with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the number one battle. If you have not guessed it already, it is the Battle of Chibi. This is the biggest and most impactful battle within the series. It's the only like battle of this kind, I think, at least of this size and this caliber. It's a naval battle. We have Cao Cao's overwhelming forces crossing the Changjian, looking to put an end to Sun Quan and Liu Bei. If Cao Cao wins this battle... I mean, he's pretty much on the road to unification at that point. The two people who are the biggest threats at the time go down. It's an easy win. However, as per the game, as per history, Liu Bei and Sun Quan come up with the infamous fire attack in order to set Cao Cao's forces ablaze, destroy their morale, completely crush their forces, and really take advantage after the battle to establish themselves as separate kingdoms. So this is an extremely important battle. It's a huge battle within all the games. I'm pretty sure it's the biggest in terms of map size. There's, you know, boats all over the place. You got land where you can fight on as well. In some cases, they added like boat shifts where, you know, one guy launches his attack, or maybe you do like in a small event to set up the fire attack. You got Peng Tong chaining the ships together. You got Zhuge Liang with the wind. This battle to me is the biggest battle within the game. Hands down, number one, no contest because it's pretty much the battle of all three kingdoms. Liu Bei's presence is not as big as it could be, but they're still there. This is like the only battle where all three kingdoms are clashing. You have Cao Cao's gigantic force against the combined forces of Liu Bei and Sun Quan. I can't really see any other battle being as big or as impactful as this one because this is really the battle that determines whether or not the Three Kingdoms period even becomes a thing. All the other battles before that we talked about, yes, they have that same impact, but Chibi was really where it was at. Cao Cao had such an advantage, but the main point of it is that Cao Cao goes to attack, fails miserably, Never, he's never taken a loss like that. Right, never takes a loss like that. And then Liu Bei is able to depart from that, set up his, you know, kingdom, go to Jing province, take it down, go to Yi province, secure Chengdu, and then really establish the Three Kingdoms period. So easily for me, the number one battle, the biggest, most impactful battle within the series, I think, is the Battle of Chi Bi. Let me know what you guys think about that down below. I, I know I can't really see any other battle having an impact like this one, and I think it's an easy choice for number one. Uh, that's all I have for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys did, definitely appreciate like, comment, or subscribe. What do you guys think the top 10 battles are? Which battle stood out to you the most? Which one did you enjoy the most when you played through it? But that's all I have, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.